Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com and today we're going to be talking about the kel CMR30, a 22 Magnum semi-automatic carbine. We've got two of them here. One is the standard off-the-shelf version and the other is a custom short-barreled carbine with all the fun stuff on it. Back in 2011, kel introduced the PMR30, a blowback operated pistol chambered for 22 Magnum with a 30 round double stack magazine. Five years later, they followed it up with a carbine version, the CMR30. The lower half of the carbine and the pistol are very similar. They share a lot of the same parts, including the magazine. The first time I got to handle a CMR30, I was really blown away just by how small and lightweight it is. 3.8 pounds unloaded, 22 and a half inches with the stock fully collapsed. It's got pistol style controls that carry over from the PMR30, ambidextrous safety levers, a bolt release on the left side only, a heel style magazine release. The charging handles are ambidextrous and non-reciprocating, so they do not move when you're actually firing the gun. The collapsible stock has five different positions. To unlock it, you just press down on this lever here in front of the trigger guard. It does not lock when it's in the fully closed position, so you can just yank it out to whatever position you want when you're ready to fire. The muzzle is threaded for a suppressor or other muzzle device. There's an integral Picatinny rail across the entire top of the receiver and a bottom rail here in front of the trigger guard. It does not have any built-in iron sights, but it does come from the factory with a set of Magpul folding sights. You guys know I have a real soft spot for ultra lightweight compact carbines or what you might call PDWs. And like I said, the handling of this thing really grabbed my attention when I first saw it. But the 16 inch barrel is clearly out of place. It makes the gun kind of front heavy since the stock weighs almost nothing. It's just a real shame to have a gun that collapses down into this tiny package, but then stick a long barrel on it. The only reason kel was forced to make it this way is the legislative dumpster fire known as the National Firearms Act. The CMR30 is just begging to be cut down to a more appropriate length. Now, normally I am not one to let 200 bucks and a little government paperwork get between me and having a good time. However, in this case, the other issue holding me back was that this comes from kel the home of gloriously unorthodox firearms concepts with tragically inconsistent execution. So I decided to just wait and see what other people thought of this gun first. And then I kind of forgot about it for a few years. And then in 2020, Dave Merrill wrote an article for Recoil Magazine called The Poor Man's MP7. It was all about setting up a short-barreled CMR30 since H&K is never going to actually give us a civilian legal MP7. I saw that and thought, great idea, Dave, but I think I would set that up just a little differently. So I did, which means I ignored all the warnings about spotty reliability from just about every CMR30 owner on the internet, including Dave Merrill. But more on that later. First, let's look at our CMR30 SBR. It came from the factory with this handsome titanium Cerakote finish on the upper. After getting my permission slip from the ATF, I had the barrel cut down to 10 inches and re-threaded. That was done by Wood Brothers Gunsmithing right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I highly recommend them if you're in the area. That brings the overall length down to just 16 and a half inches with the stock collapsed and the unloaded weight drops to 3.3 pounds before accessories. I'm not gonna do anything with this gun that requires backup iron sights. So I took off the Magpul sights and I've just got a basic Sig Romeo 5 red dot on here. The somewhat ridiculous Tiger Print two point sling is another stunning offering from Trunk Monkey Designs. Had to get a little creative with the sling attachment points. The CMR30 only has these little uh, loops in the back for I think attaching a hook style single point sling. There are ways to add other types of sling attachment points, but I just decided to use a set of Proctor sling loops. These are great because you can find a place on just about any gun to wrap a Proctor loop. The downside is that they're just not very quick to take on and off. I see a lot of CMR30s with vertical foregrips attached. It's not really my thing. I generally don't care for vertical foregrips unless it's on a gun where the forend just gets too hot to hang on to. 
but that's not really an issue with the CMR30. So I just added some uh, rail covers from Ergo Grips to make the forend a little more comfortable for a gripping surface. This is my basic setup, but let's say I wanted to ramp things up a little bit. Maybe I need to do some nighttime guard duty down at my chicken coop. In that case, I can throw on this Hollow Sun three power magnifier and slap on a Surefire Scout Light right up front here. Now I am ready to ambush a nocturnal predator and the complete package fully loaded weighs only 5.7 pounds. I've also replaced a few of the original parts on the CMR30. M Carbo is one of the very few companies to support the CMR30 with aftermarket parts. Their safety levers have a wider shelf than the factory levers, making them a bit easier to manipulate. I also installed one of their stainless steel feed ramps to replace the plastic factory feed ramp. M Carbo also has an aftermarket trigger for the CMR30. I have not made that upgrade because I think the factory trigger is just fine. It's not super crisp, but it breaks at about three pounds. So now the gun looks great. The handling is fantastic. It's very versatile. I can store it just about anywhere, but how does it actually perform? Well, like so many people before me have said of this gun, it's tons of fun when it works. The recoil is minimal. The 30 round capacity will put a grin on anybody's face. The collapsible stock provides a surprisingly decent cheek weld. It's just an enjoyable gun to shoot. The CMR30 only runs with supersonic 22 Magnum ammo, which is not exactly quiet. Even suppressed, it's nothing like shooting a 22 long rifle. However, I think it is softer shooting and quieter than a suppressed nine millimeter carbine. I've read a few complaints about people getting excessive gas blowback in the face when shooting the CMR30 suppressed. I've not found that to be the case at all. With a Silencer Coast Sparrow suppressor, I hardly feel any of that gas. This CMR30 could even serve as the ideal packable general purpose carbine if only it worked more often. But the reliability is just not there. It was okay at first, but after just the first couple hundred rounds, I started getting multiple failures to fire and feed in every magazine. After a lot of trial and error, I've got it running about 99% of the time for now. Uh, this particular gun works best with CCI 40 grain maxi mags, either the hollow point or the flat nose total metal jacket. Our unmodified CMR30 is not quite as picky about ammo, but it's had its share of reliability issues as well. I don't think it's the shorter barrel that's the cause for the stoppages in the SBR, at least not the only cause. Installing the M Carbo feed ramp improved reliability, especially after I polished it like they recommend. A lot of CMR30 owners report improved feeding with the M Carbo magazine release, but in our case, that actually made things slightly worse. It runs best when it's clean and lubed. Unfortunately, it gets dirty very quickly when shooting it suppressed. I'll give it a thorough cleaning after every 100 to 200 rounds I have not shot it a whole lot without the suppressor. I would estimate it could go maybe four to 500 rounds unsuppressed between cleanings. Correctly loading the magazines is crucial with the CMR30. That is surprisingly difficult to do and you can't always tell that you've done it incorrectly. An aftermarket magazine loader is almost a necessity. I've been using this one from American Speed Loaders. It's helpful but it's still possible to end up with some rounds that are not quite lined up right. In terms of accuracy, I am sure the average 22 Magnum bolt action can outshoot the CMR30, but I think it's more than adequate for practical use. With CCI Maxi Mags, I can consistently shoot one inch or smaller five round groups from the bench at 50 yards. Cutting the barrel did not seem to hurt accuracy. Our SBR actually shoots slightly better groups than the unmodified carbine. Velocity does drop with the shorter barrel, but not as much as you might think. On average, velocity was 8% higher with a 16 inch barrel versus the 10 inch. Velocity dropped 25% going from the 10 inch to a pistol length barrel. So a 10 inch barrel does not quite take full advantage of everything that 22 Magnum is capable of but it is still doing magnum things. Pushing a 40 grain bullet at 1700 feet per second is far beyond what 22 long rifle is capable of. 
In fact, that is the same bullet weight and velocity of an FN 57 by 28 spear gold dot when fired from a pistol. Now that might sound kind of like a random comparison, but it's actually a little hint of things to come. We are right now working on some ballistic gelatin testing to compare 57 by 28 and a few other cartridges. And for this batch of testing in a first for Lucky Gunner, we are using genuine organic based FBI spec ordnance gelatin blocks. So be on the lookout for those results later this year. So without giving away any spoilers from that project, the performance of 22 Magnum out of a 10 inch barrel is really not bad at all for a low recoil ultra compact carbine. Unfortunately, the CMR30 is just not dependable enough to rely on for emergency life-saving purposes. There are several reliable pistol caliber carbines on the market that are much better suited for self-defense. However, I have made good use of this CMR30 as a pest control device. A couple months ago, I used it to take out a mange infested fox that had murdered some of our poor chickens the previous day. A single round at 70 yards was enough to incapacitate it. A second round finished it off. The more time I spend with 22 Magnum, the more I appreciate it. I don't think it gets nearly enough respect. It's much more powerful than 22 long rifle and more accurate than the typical handgun cartridge. I wish the CMR30 was not the only PDW style firearm chambered for 22 Magnum, but it is a rim fire cartridge and that presents some unique design challenges. Smith & Wesson's new 22 Magnum pistol looks promising, so maybe they'll do a carbine version of that someday. Until then, the CMR30 is an enjoyable gun if you're willing to deal with some of its quirks. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. If so, please be sure to subscribe to our channel and the next time you need ammo, get it from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.